away from them the corruption that's come upon their life. And he's doing it in the name of God. Replacing it with eternal life. Right? Yeah. yeah. And see, we don't look at the forgiveness of sin like that. Yeah. We still think the corruption can come upon our life. Right. We're still trying to save ourselves from the corruption. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah. We're still living as if our lives are fragile. We're, heck, we're still living as if our lives are held in this world. Oh, yeah. As if this world is. Listen, guys. Man, please don't get upset if you do. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> this world ain't going to be recorded in history. This world ain't going to be remembered. It doesn't mean we won't remember each other. So don't take it to some place I'm not taking it. But this world has been corrupted by death. And we ain't going to have any memory of death. Right. Death is not going to be written down in the eternal history books. It's going to be plucked from everything. And so, man, this world is not the end-all, be-all. What you do in this world, what you have in this world, what happens to you in this world is not the end-all, be-all. Right. The most important thing anybody can do in this world is receive eternal life as a gift. Amen. Now you're a success. Now what do you want to do? <laughs> Your life is secure eternally. Your life can't be harmed. Your life can't be taken from or added to. What do you want to do? Amen. <laughs> Can you imagine the zeal you could attack yes. something with if you weren't always busy worrying about what it looked like, what people thought, what would people say, what would they think, what would they do, what will I do, how will I survive, how will I live, how will I be okay? I mean, we don't realize how, how much our thoughts are permeated with this. The word of eternal life comes to cleanse our thoughts with that, and we become like little children again, where we're not busy weighing all that, because we know God has weighed all of it, and that God's taken our life and hid it with Him in Christ. Yes. And now we, we just hear that word, man, and we walk through this world filled up with that life, right? Yeah. That's what it means to preach the word of eternal life. Amen. It means that there's a life. That is so much that even when the fullness of sin and death manifested in a human body, there's a life that is so much that it was able to swallow that sin and death from the inside out and bring out a body not only free from sin and death, but never subject to sin and death ever again. That's what's inside of us. And we're all the time busy about, well... My one leg's not as long as the other leg. <laughs> Man, I'd really be happy if I could get that. Right, seven steps to a happy marriage. Got to do yeah. that one too. Yeah. Listen, man, your marriage will be happy when you realize you have all things in God. Amen. You know why? You'll no longer look at your spouse and think about all the things they exactly. lack. Yes. Lack will be a foreign concept to you. Right? right? Yes. Your spouse could get it wrong left and right. They could fall short. You'll find yourself appreciating the falling short. You'll see them in their weakness and their struggle. And, oh, that sweet soul. <laughs> right? Instead of looking at it, the reason why it bothers us so much is because we look at it like it's stealing from us. Yes. Yeah. Right. We don't just see that they're weak and having their... We see they're stealing from me. And then you get upset. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you guys hit on it in the Bible study, but offense... The only reason we get offended with people is because we think they've done something that can take life from us. Right. Or we think they've done something that can keep life from us. Or that can keep us from some good thing. Right. And then we become upset about it. Right. Sometimes we think we've done something that's going to keep us from life yes. and we get upset about it. <laughs> yes, that's the worst for me. Yeah. <laughs>